Raja right now is a very happy Raja and is a person who's very pleased with the work and commitment and passion. Raja is a person who is always on a constant journey. I am a very, um, I'm pretty content Raja right now. Welcome to LA. <laughs> this is my garden. I uh, love this place. It definitely was a selling point in me moving here because if you're gonna live in Southern California, then you must have ample space to enjoy nature and the sunshine. So I get to live in this. LA is my home because I'm from LA and, um, and I'm, I'm a very rare anomaly in Los Angeles as being an actual, you know, I'm from here, I was born here. Part of my childhood was spent in Indonesia between ages three and nine. But mostly my life has been here. I went to college here, I went to high school, you know, all of my schooling, my family lives here. And we have amazing weather. We have tons and tons of room. The pot comes freely. There's a ton of creativity here. I'm very fortunate to have very interesting neighbors. I live in a complex of all artists. Got an illustrator up there, photographer, tattoo artist, and then a Raja upstairs. <laughs> The visual part of drag is what I am attracted to the most. I love the color. I love the allowance and the permission for it. I sometimes think that the best part about drag is getting ready for drag or creating the drag. The performance itself is not as um, satisfying to me as much as the, the creative process that prepares the drag. If there's anything that I loved about drag, it's the gorgeousness of it. I think I have about tentative seven to eight solid drag children. And their roles in my life are very, very important because they're not just my drag children, they're kind of like my besties, you know? And most of them I'd met in a situation where I was the older mentor and I just kind of, you know, took them under my wing because I see something very, very special and unique about them. My drag daughter, Blake, AKA Thierry Mizell, which I named her after Thierry Mugler and Steven Mizell. <laughs> but Blake is an amazing creator, amazing sewer, uh, corseteer, wig maker. And I feel somehow responsible in, in the progress and the journey that Blake is experiencing now. Hi. How are you? Speaking of my drag children, oh my goodness, <laughs> nice to see you, babe. Nice to see you too. Aurora Forte is one of my drag children. Oh, What'd you bring me? I bought you a birthday present. Oh my gosh, thank you. <laughs> You're crazy. You're legit like I f***ing hate you right now. <laughs> PJ, are you kidding me? I love you. Why did you do this to me? Uh... You guys, look. It's the Gucci Raja bag. It's brown suede. It's black leather and gold chain. And it's the Raja bag. And it has the tiger on it. Oh my god! I think it's important to have a prayer space. I've actually had this little altar since the 90s, and I just keep things that, that just kind of remind me of the place in my life and the journey that I've been through. Um, and I always want to remember all of the people that have really helped put me in the place that I am now, including my parents, um, both of them deceased. For the first time in my life, I'm without them. And these are two people who really influenced the direction in my life, and I pray to them often. I think about them often. This photo is of me pretending to be my dad. I have his glasses on and smoking the clove cigarettes that he used to smoke. 
uh, probably, this is probably like late 70s. It's a photo of me from when I was like 19 years old. Um, I thought I was being very supermodelish shooting this photo with my friend. It was my very first early photo shoot that I've ever done. We did it uh, like against the oil rigs in Orange County. Raja before Drag Race was a badass bitch. She was a troublemaker and gorgeous and lived a life of, of being non-binary before that was even a term. Yeah, she was a fun, fun girl. <laughs> you know what else I have here? My first set of breasts from when I first started doing drag. They are nearly powdery, breaking down because they're so old. I started drag when I was 16 and tomorrow I'll be 48. So that's 32, right? Is that the math? 32. Anyway, long time, over 30 years. I mostly experimented and did all of my first years of drag in the early 90s, which I treasure. I think that's like a very specific and um, important time that I got to live in. I'm not like as hungry as I was to get on the road in the same way. Like I wanna see my friends. I hate being unavailable to my friends. Mm -hmm. And like, I realize that I'm, that I'm supposed to be as busy as I can be because that's expectation. But like, yeah. I already did this. Tomorrow I turn 48. You know what I'm saying? 48, bitch. Wait till you get 48. There's there's a certain luxury in, there's a very certain luxury in like saying no. <laughs> and being like, I don't give a f Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> My friend Kira Goody is a shoe designer in England and she made these for me. And then I rhinestone them. They just oh they just came in this God. like raw this raw like stainless steel and then I stone. Okay, like they're God. still coming, <laughs> the stones are coming off. Okay, but God. aren't they cool? Oh my God. Crazy, right? They God. hurt so bad when you put them on. My experience with America's Next Top Model was absolutely crucial to my identity. But I wouldn't say that America's Next Top Model was my first time on TV because before that I had been invited onto the Jenny Jones show multiple times. I was on the talk shows with the club kids, but like on the latter part of it, like I, I was the one who was watching, uh, you know, Richie Rich, Amanda Lepore, RuPaul on Geraldo, and I wanted to be that and I got the tail end of that. That to me was the only way to find any kind of recognition or validation of what you do was to be on a talk show. And I was, I'm definitely part of that generation. It is my pleasure to have you all here at RuPaul's Drag Race. You come from all around this great country. I remember meeting Rebecca Glasscock outside of Duplex in New York City and being very excited. And I knew Tammy Brown and Angina very well because I'm from Los Angeles. After season one and seeing my friends on it, I was really ecstatic about the series. And so season two came along and Raven and Morgan were on there. And I was like, oh my God, those are my friends. And LA was highly represented at the time. So I was very excited to see it. It made me think, this is, this is perhaps something I should do. Hi. I remember when we, as we were leaving to film, thinking that I wasn't going to make it through the entire season. I thought the information that I had brought and packed into my bags was perhaps too much. You know, I was like, is the world ready for my point of view on fashion, on drag, I, and gender. I was highly criticized for not wearing boobs. And I thought, I really honestly thought that they were not gonna have me. They're gonna be like, you know what, bitch, you gotta go and I had planned on being at least there halfway. I said to myself, you know what, if you make it and you get kicked off six out of 12, 13 people, you did good. But I had no clue until I realized that I had made it beyond six and I was like, oh my God, I'm in this. Like, I really have to do this. I have to, I have to, I have to try to win this. And, and then my, my fire was revved up and, and then I realized, oh my gosh, I'm in this competition and I should probably do the best I can at it while I'm here. Club kid. What is her body? What is her hair? What is her makeup? I don't see her on the same level as the rest of us. 
There was a lot of skepticism from my co-competitors. They were very like, oh my God, Roger's a club kid, Alexis Mateo, Mariah Balenciaga, all of them were like, boo, what is going on? But I have always been the weirdo, always been the weirdo. And I like to do things that kind of accentuate the weirdo. If you're questioning something that I'm doing, I'm probably gonna make you question it even further. I like the challenge of that and I've always loved that. And um, when I saw their reaction to me, it gave me nothing but like absolute satisfaction. Oh. Manila and I being together on stage in the very end was like, I, I, I knew that Manila had it in the bag. I was like, look at her. She's in this lime green rhinestone dress and here I am in like a halter top and a, and a derby with a bunch of chains on it. And I just looked at her and I was like, wow, you're really properly doing drag. This big hair and the big jewels. I was like, I'm not even that. Like I really kind of just gave it to Manila right away. So the, the shock and surprise of me actually winning was definitely a, a moment. It was an, a near heart attack. I'll never forget it. Raja. <laughs> I did ugly cry. I was surprised and um, you'll never see a cry as ugly with so much authenticity because they don't do it like that anymore. My season was the last time you'd ever seen a real experience in that sense because my win was leaked through Perez Hilton. In fact, not even just my win, the fact that I was on the cast before the cast was announced was on Perez Hilton. So things have changed since because uh, I think, uh, you know, production has gotten a lot more savvy. My reigning year was a f***ing blast. I lived like a rock star. I literally had sex with every person that I wanted to. I drank every drink. I had a blast. It was so much fun. People started to reach out to me that I hadn't heard from in a long time and there were suddenly these fans and I lived the rock star dream that I could have only imagined. It was like the perfect time to win because people were really catching on to the series and they were really becoming addicted to it. So there were fans out there and, and lines wrapped around the building as, as people waited for me to perform in nightclubs in New York City and, and, and cities that I would have never imagined to perform before. Now, looking back at it, I think that season three and what I did on season three really like changed a lot of people's lives and minds. And I didn't think that that was going to be so powerful as a case. I just thought that I was just gonna go there and do what I do. But now looking at it and seeing my current competitors of, um, of All Stars, it was profound to see how many um, of my co-competitors were actually kind of really quite young and I really kind of changed their minds about what could be done in drag and in expression and that part, that part. That part's amazing. It's amazing. I said yes to All Star 7 because I love being on TV. I. <laughs> I am not done in this work and so I still have a lot to show people and you know as an entertainer and as a person who 
enjoys attention. I'm a Leo rising, so that kind of adds to the fact that I just like being on TV. And I, I have a lot to show people. I'm not done. You can't just dismiss me. I still have a lot to prove and say. I'm really excited to be here because I honestly don't get to be home very much and spend time with my community. I don't get to be here in West Hollywood very much. And I also am kind of agoraphobic, so I just stay home and I'm like, off everybody a lot too. <laughs> Can I relate? Yes. You know, you get it. But um, I'm really happy to be out tonight. Let's watch this together. Let's watch episode eight um, of RuPaul's Drag Race All Star Season 7, All Winner, starring me. Seeing myself on TV again, I like it, and you know, it's a love-hate. It, it feels like kind of like it's the responsible thing for me to do, to get to see myself in 360 view, and to hear my voice, and to see how I seem to the world, you know, just to kind of look at it. You know, I watch these episodes over and over because it's a unique experience. It is not something that everyone gets to do. So I do watch myself a lot. It's the literal definition of an out-of-body experience. You are literally watching yourself out of body. I was most nervous about who perhaps I would be competing with. Um, I think I kind of prematurely said yes to it without realizing who could potentially be on the cast. I didn't know if there were gonna be other energies or personalities that, I, that might disagree with how I live my life daily. Cause I'm chill as fuck and I do not like dramatic people disturbing my day. That's my job. I can disturb my own day on my own dramatic self. Ladies, I've made my decision. Raja. We just have to say, for, for someone who participated in a contest 11 years ago that I had no idea would change my life, I'm just telling you right now that I am so thankful for everyone who is supporting me right now in this moment. Being, you know, under the umbrella that is Drag Race, I feel very fortunate, you know, because drag is a hard gig, you know, and if you can get any sort of recognition and, and love and an audience that can, that can view you globally, I feel is a privilege. I feel validated by it, I do. Um, but also, it being part of so many queens now, there are literally hundreds of us who have been part of this process, and always realizing that my job is to always separate myself from other people, to find my uniqueness. I think you should go uniqueness, then charisma. How different are you? What are you providing? What are you doing that is so unique in your existence as a tailless mammal on this planet? It's important for me to get to express myself and show that I have something else to offer. What is next for Raja? I don't know. I don't know, I don't know, and that's what I love about it. I actually don't have a fucking clue. I, I, I really like just going with the vibes and everything that I've done has been pretty spot on because I do go with the vibes, so I'm gonna keep doing that thing. My greatest fear is that, that I'll leave this realm, I'll die, and that people will forget me. The population of planet Earth is billions, and, um, and of those billions, only few people get their, get their names uh, or legacy continued. It doesn't, it doesn't happen for everybody, and that's definitely my biggest fear. So I think I put in this work into doing this because I really just want I, I just don't want to be a speck of dust in the, in, in the universe. I definitely want to be a star, always. Planet, legendary planetary legend star. <laughs>
Thanks, Michelle Visage. Do you want gay shit? Check out RuPaul's Drag Race YouTube channel and hit subscribe.